Hey guys, Alex Lindblom here from Snorkel Venture coming to you with a new video blog all about Indonesia. Indonesia, as you may have seen, is a massive country. It's broken up into over 17,000 islands. Uh, so as a result, it can be a little bit confusing knowing what location is where um, and differentiating between them all. And so the way I'm gonna do that is by focusing on the locations which also conveniently happen to be Snorkel Venture destinations. So before we get into the destinations, let's go over some quick Indonesia facts. Uh, there's over 17,000 islands, as I said, 300 different languages between the different islands, uh, 127 volcanoes, and it's also the center of the coral triangle, which means it has the world's highest uh, coral reef and reef fish biodiversity in the world. And lastly, I just want to say that Indonesia is a very, very safe place to travel. I've lived and worked here for the past seven years and I've never had a single um, or know anybody who's had a, a real issue with crime whatsoever. Um, my house that I've been living in for the past two years has an open air sort of living room and when I'm away on snorkel venture trips for weeks at a time, I don't worry about my, my valuables that are uh, just sort of essentially sitting in my living room. All right, moving on. Jakarta and Bali. I'm not going to spend a ton of time with these two destinations, but they do deserve mentioning as they are sort of the hub for our trip in, in that this is where we are going to meet and start the trip. Jakarta, as you know, is the capital of Indonesia and it's located on the island of Java. Um, Jakarta, for the lack of a better description, is just a really big sort of chaotic city, but luckily for us, we're not going to spend any time in the city. Uh, our stop here is transitory, so we're just going to use the airport and it's very comfortable airport hotel to relieve some of the jet lag, meet up, and then head off uh, to our ultimate snorkeling destination. Bali, on the other hand, while we do use the airport and the airport hotel in the same way that we do Jakarta's, is well worth a visit beyond the airport, um, if you have the time. I would even recommend spending a few days before or after the trip um, exploring Bali a little bit. Um, the resorts and boutique hotels here are really fantastic, uh, really amazing food, nice nice beaches, waterfalls, jungles, monkeys. Um, it's really an exciting place and it's, um, it's, uh, it's where I live. It's awesome. All right, so the first destination I'm going to talk about is Komodo. Komodo is probably one of Indonesia's most famous destinations. It's just a short one hour flight from Bali and the park is made up of over 29 islands four of which have uh, the Komodo dragons, which I'm sure you are all well aware of. The snorkeling here is exceptional. There's over 700 species of fish and over 260 species of coral. There's just such a concentration of marine life um, and coral in the, in the marine park that, uh, that you can readily predict how a snorkel is going to go. I've been snorkeling there uh, for the past eight years or so, and I it's, I'm continuously blown away um, by the snorkeling and the, the encounters that you have here. Manta rays are all over the place and in a few places they do congregate um, in quite large numbers. If you if you're lucky, we had some really exceptional encounters um, in the 2019 season with our snorkelers. We had uh, a ball of probably about 40 mantas uh, just spinning and rolling uh, underneath us. It was pretty amazing. Uh, turtles are also all over the place. You have the hawksbill sea turtle, you also have uh, the green sea turtles, and there's a cleaning station, uh, sort of like a, a bay, where they do come for cleaning. You can just see them sleeping all over the reef. It's awesome. One of the beautiful things about Komodo is that the reefs are so diverse is that no two snorkels are really ever the same. You have mangroves, which we try to explore um, if the tide is just right. We have uh, gentle sloping reefs, we have some gentle drifts, we have walls, we have a few pinnacles, and then of course there's the house reef in front of the, uh, the resort with its uh, pier, where jackfish and batfish congregate, there's cuttlefish, there's just really no, there's, there's, there's no repetition of uh, things you'll see. Everything is new and exciting throughout the trip. Alora. Uh, so Alora is just a small cluster of islands east of Komodo and accessed by a short flight from Jakarta. Alor is still quite untouched by tourism, um, as the only real resorts that cater to foreigners are um, just a couple uh, snorkeling, small snorkel and dive resorts in the area. And because Alor is just now becoming popular, snorkelers and divers 
and also because the local community seems to have um, really been practicing quite sustainable fishing methods. Uh, the reefs and the marine life are in a really, really, really uh, pristine state. These are arguably some of the most beautiful reefs, not only that, but most diverse reefs you'll ever find um, anywhere in the world. Something else that makes Allure quite special aside from the really, really beautiful reefs is that it is a migratory uh, route for larger whales, which do include the blue whales, sperm whales, um, and a few other species. It is difficult and probably near impossible to get into the water and snorkel with these large animals, but it is really cool when they just cross your bow. And they are regularly spotted um, during the migratory season. Along with that, there is a residential super pod of um, dolphins and melonhead whales, which do come together at times and make the water boil, essentially, as they all sort of jump in and out of the water. Once again, these dolphins and uh, melonhead whales are really shy and therefore very difficult to snorkel with. But one of the other large um, marine inhabitants in the area that we do have a chance to snorkel with is the mola mola, uh, or the sunfish. These things are massive. They can be up to 15 feet from wingtip to wingtip. There's a big sort of fish like this. And when you have a rising tide, which brings in the cold water from the south uh, during full moon, we do have a chance to find these large, normally deep dwelling creatures uh, flapping around on the surface. And then we do have a chance to snorkel with them. And we've been lucky in the past. They are so cool. Also, much like Komodo, the reefs here are very diverse. We don't have the mangroves uh, like we do in Komodo, but we do have a couple uh, piers, which make some awesome snorkeling sites as they attract uh, quite big schools of fish like jacks and uh, batfish. The one right in front of the resort we use, Alami Alor, has a residential school of diamond spadefish and batfish. They also have their own residential school uh, or um, colony of mandarin fish, which is literally just in for off the doorsteps of the bungalow that can be, uh, you can watch their mating behavior every night because they're only in a couple feet of water. We do also have some, we do have just endless sort of mellow drift snorkels as well as walls and the reefs just, just continue. There's no um, real end in sight for the reefs there. It's, it's, it's quickly becoming one of my favorite snorkeling destinations. One of the other major islands in Indonesia is Sulawesi. Uh, it's the big silly shaped one in the middle. Uh, it's also home to some really fantastic, uh, really easy snorkeling, really comfortable resorts. And it's also really easy to arrive to from Bali. In the north, we have uh, five islands known as Bunaka National Park. Uh, and then in the southeast, we have another um, small island chain known as Wakatobi. Uh, we're gonna talk about Bunaken right now. Um, to arrive to Bunaken, we just take a quick one and a half hour flight to uh, the city of Manado, and then from there it's just a short 30-minute uh, boat ride um, on one of the resort's comfortable boats to the resort. Uh, the resort we use there is called Saladin. It's on its own little island um, within Bunaka National Park. It's the smallest island in the park, but it's, 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 uh, it's really beautiful. They have their own white sand beach in front of the resort, um, and it's really, really, really comfortable. The snorkeling here is also amazing. Um, very, very, very mild currents. It's just sort of gently push you along the reef. The reefs are typically more hard coral, but there are um, some large areas where there's a lot more sponges and uh, things like that. Most of the reefs are sort of like a hard coral plateau, which just kind of fan out from um, the different islands but then which do abruptly drop off, uh, most of them, into walls. This is really cool because it's really fun to just swim over and then just kind of whew, float over over the blue abyss. Back in the day, unfortunately, this used to be one of the areas where they did um, do a lot of uh, harvesting of sea turtles for not only the meat, but also the eggs. But Bunaken is one of Indonesia's oldest national parks, and so, thanks to the conservation efforts from the resorts in the area, but, but then also from the local authorities and uh, the villages who have been cooperating, the turtle population has come back uh, a lot. There's a lot of turtles in the area. Anytime you say Bunaken to somebody who knows turtles is the next thing they think. So if you are lucky, and I've been here for, uh, been to the area a couple times now, and both times I've actually been able to see 
uh, a main emergence of the baby green sea turtles who've hatched from the eggs, and then you can watch them run into the run into the water. And if it's if you are um, lucky, you can even snorkel with them, which is really, really, really special. And then, yeah, of course, when any time you're snorkeling along the reefs, you will see green sea turtles just just meandering along, sleeping in the, the cracks and crevices, munching on some coral. They are prolific. Um, one of the cool things about Bunaken, um, and just Sulawesi in general, is that because it's a little bit more central, uh, the seasons are more mild here. Other places in Indonesia, like Komodo, Aloha, Rajampat, uh, these places have uh, tend to be more seasonal, uh, which is based on the, uh, the rainy season and the dry season. Bunaken and Wakatobi also um, have a more year-round season. There are definitely better times to go, and this is when we go, but um, yeah, the weather is very mild, uh, typically in Sulawesi. Wakatobi is in the southeast corner of Sulawesi on its own uh, little island. It's, it's also another very, very comfortable, very easy, very uh, beautiful uh, snorkeling destination. The resort here is fantastic. They have their own uh, pillow buffet, um, so you can actually call up reception and be like, I would like a down pillow, or I would like a hyperallergenic pillow, and then they would deliver it to you. Pretty cool. But outside of the pillows, the, the resort is fantastic. The, the, the beach is idyllic. The reefs here are very robust and very healthy. There's only one resort in the area, um, and as a result has left the reefs in a really, really, really pristine state. The only way to arrive to Wakatobi is via a private charter flight uh, organized by the resort, and we land at their own personal airstrip, picked up by the boat, and then driven the last 10-15 um, minutes to the resort. These are some of the healthiest reefs you'll ever see, and actually most some of the most biodiverse, as they have over 700 uh, species of coral, which I believe is the highest coral count of anywhere in the world. Um, and much like Bunaken, as I said, uh, the seasons here are very mild and essentially year-round. Rajampa. I know most of you have heard of this one. If you haven't, quickly look it up uh, or just pretend like you have to remain cool. Uh, the area is actually meant to be the most biodiverse marine ecosystem in the world. Rajampa is located on the west coast of West Papua. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, that big island, New Guinea, you probably have heard of. The west side of that is Indonesia, and it's known as West Papua. East of it is Papua New Guinea, which is a completely different country. Those islands off the west coast of it are known as Raja Ampat, or the Four Kings in uh, the local language, Indonesian. Its reefs are amazing. They're, they're just teeming with life. So everything from um, manta rays, two different species of manta ray, one of the few places in the world that actually has both species of manta ray, the oceanic manta and the reef manta. Um, big schools of fish, barracuda, jacks, uh, batfish, all right up close to the surface. Amazing islands, just, it's, it's, it's the full package. To arrive here, um, it does take a little bit more effort, but I promise you it is absolutely worth it. We have to take a direct flight from Jakarta. Uh, the flight's about five hours long, and then there is a boat ride after it. Uh, but I promise, promise, promise you it's absolutely worth it. I lived and worked in Raja for six months every year for five years uh, on the boat that I worked on before I joined Snorkel Venture, and it's, it's, it's awesome. Since this area has been declared a marine sanctuary, the marine life has just come back um, like a tornado. It's, it's so robust um, in both the reef and in uh, just the biomass, the, the amount of fish you see and the diversity of fish. It's, it's crazy. I keep saying diversity, but there's just so many different things there. Uh, and they're still finding more species. Uh, at the moment, there's over 1,766 species of uh, fish in the area. I'm going to toot my own horn here for just a quick second. I was, uh, as I was responsible for finding the 1,565th fish in Rajampa, and that was the, the Mola Mola that came swimming by our boat, uh, and I was able to jump in, or we were all able to jump in and uh, snorkel with it for a good 45 minutes. Never before had a Mola Mola been recorded uh, living 
uh, in Rajampat. Until now, yeah. Something to take note though about Raja is that it's a massive area. If you look at Komodo on a map and compare it against the, the boundaries of Rajampat, it's like six times bigger or more. Um, it's, it's huge. With that in mind, it is very difficult and if not impossible to see all of Raja um, in one, uh, one trip there. So what we do is we normally break up our Raja trips. We have three different trips at the moment. We have a north trip, which concentrates on the Dampier Strait area. And then we have a, a trip in the south to an area known as Mosul. And then we also have a liveaboard option, uh, which does concentrate in Mosul, but does spend time in the north and central area as well. So the deliverboard does present you with the opportunity to move around a bit more. Even if you're in the north or if you are concentrated in south in Mosul, there's still no shortage of um, reefs and islands to explore. It's such a big area. You could spend a year just exploring Mosul, for example. In short, if you had to choose one destination for snorkeling to see it all, big fish, small fish, uh, beautiful reefs, crazy landscapes, all while staying in fantastic resorts, or even uh, a beautiful wooden sailing ship. Rajampat would be the opposite of a bad choice. Kalimantan, or Indonesian Borneo. Uh, Borneo is a very large island, and it's actually divided up into three countries, uh, with Indonesia being the largest portion of it. There's also Malaysia in the north, and then a very small, small um, nation known as Brunei. Indonesian Borneo, or Kalimantan, has some of the oldest, densest rainforests in the world, as most of you probably imagine. In these rainforests, you'll find those giant ginger primates, known as orangutans, which we do offer a tour to go see. But Borneo also has some fantastic snorkeling on these remote islands just off the east coast of Kalimantan, or Indonesian Borneo. The island we'll be based on for the snorkeling activities is called Nunukan, and it's just two quick flights from Jakarta, followed by another short boat ride. The reefs that surround the island are typical Indonesian reefs, prolific and amazing. Like any of our destinations, there's no, there's no shortage of things to see. We have manta cleaning stations here, um, but there's also opportunity to see them feeding on the surface. Uh, lots of colorful reef fish, uh, lots of green sea turtles. Uh, it's a really, really, really uh, cool place. One of the coolest things and most unique um, encounters you can have here is a jellyfish lake. It's not actually a lake, it's, it's salt water, uh, but it is closed off. Before, back in the day, it used to be open, but then through geology and science, uh, the lake, it became closed, locking all of the jellyfish inside, and then now because there's no predators, they don't have a sting anymore. Um, so you can freely swim about this enclosed sort of um, lagoon, let's say, in thousands and thousands and thousands of stingless jellyfish. It's really, really, really surreal. And there's only a handful of these anywhere in the world. All right, guys, so that just about does it for this hopefully quick and concise uh, rundown of Indonesia and its top snorkeling destinations. If you have any more specific questions about any of these destinations that I didn't answer here, feel free to send us an email um, or just have a look through our website, www.snorkelventure.com. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks very much, and hopefully see you on a tour.